Welcome back to another lesson for Electrical Trade Theory N2. Don't forget to like and to share these videos. And in this module two, we'll be taking a look at conductors, insulators, and cables. And this makes up 12% of the national exam paper. Now in unit 2.1, which is all about conductors, to define a conductor, it is a substance through which current can flow. Factors that influence the choice of a good conductor is whether it's affordable, readily available, mechanically strong, flexible, corrosion resistant, and if you are able to solder it. Some examples of good conductors is gold, silver, copper, and aluminum. Properties and uses of the different conductors. For silver, it is the best known conductor it is used in batteries, contactors, and relays. It is, however, scarce and expensive. For copper, it is the most commonly used conductor. It is high conductivity, malleable, and ductile, and is used in most electrical equipment. For hard-drawn copper, it is more rigid and strong. It is used in wiring panels and commutators. For annealed copper, it is subjected to heat treatment, making it more flexible and found in a house wiring. Stranded conductors can be twisted. They are more flexible and used in most wiring applications. For gold, gold is highly conductive, malleable and ductile, and is used in electronics such as computers. For aluminum, it is mainly used in overhead distribution lines, it, has, it is highly conductive, lightweight, and cheap. However, the disadvantages, it has low tensile strength, does not solder easily. And in terms of the transmission lines, there is a lot of movement over long distance. For carbon, it is hard wearing and can withstand high temperatures. It is mainly used as carbon brushes inside our motors. The basic tools used when making a conductor or cable joint is screwdrivers, long nose pliers, crimping tools, hacksaw, cable knife, spring bender, and draw tape. Some methods of joining small conductors, we have insulated strip connectors, screw connectors, soldered joint, married joint, ferrule joint, and lugged connector. The requirements for a good conductor joint, the joint should not have a higher resistance than the cable itself. It should be neat and placed in a suitable place, mechanically strong. Strands must not be damaged and not exposed to any damage and should be easily accessible. Let's take a look at insulators. To define an insulator, it is used to electrically separate conductors. Polyvinyl chloride, also known as PVC, is the most common form of insulator. Rigid PVC is used for the manufacture of pipes, and flexible PVC is used for insulation of electrical cables. The advantages of PVC, it is cheap, easy to terminate, and readily available. The disadvantages, it has low current rating, low voltage rating, and melts under high temperature. Cross-linked polyethylene, XLPE cables, can withstand high temperature, is lightweight and flexible. The disadvantages, it's more expensive, is mixed with other chemicals, and has poor heat resistance. For asbestos, it is used in heating elements and wiring of stoves. Mica is a good insulator and can withstand high temperatures. It is used in bread toasters, and for insulating the segments of commutators and DC machines. Bakelite is a very hard plastic. It has good insulating properties. It is robust, heat resistant, and chemical resistant. It is mainly used for circuit breaker casings, telephone casings, and car distributor caps. Porcelain has high dielectric strength, can withstand high voltage, and withstand high temperature. Ceramic is made from clay and is baked at a lower temperature. Glass is cheaper and naturally waterproof. 
and withstands high temperatures. And glass is also a very common form of insulator used in high voltage networks. Silicone is flexible, fire resistant, and has high tensile strength. It is used in electric stoves and heaters. Magnesium oxide can withstand high temperatures and is used in spiral stove plates and heating cables. The terminology of cables. An electrical cable is an assembly which has its own insulation, screening and protection. A flexible cord has a cross-sectional area which does not exceed four millimeters square and the strands is less than 0.31 millimeters. A flexible cable has a cross-sectional area which does exceed four millimeters square and the strands is less than 0.51 millimeters. Cables used in the electrical industry are classified according to two factors, the type of insulation and the type of load supplied. Cables used in the electrical industry are also classified according to voltage ratings. Low voltage cables are up to 1000 volts. Medium voltage cables are rated between 1000 volts to 33,000 volts. High voltage cables are rated between 33,000 volts to 230,000 volts. Extra high voltage cables are greater than 230,000 volts. For a PVC insulated wire armored cable, there are different components. The conductor itself allows for the flow of current. The insulation electrically separates the conductors. The inner sheet keeps the cores together. The armoring provides mechanical protection and the outer sheet keeps the cable waterproof. The advantages are of a PVC insulated wire armored cable. It is cheap, easy to terminate and readily available. The disadvantages, it has low current rating, low voltage rating, and the lead for the armoring is not eco-friendly. XLPE, which is our cross-linked polyethylene cable, can withstand high temperature, lightweight and flexible. The disadvantages, it is expensive. It can be mixed with other chemicals and has poor heat resistance. A Piltzwa cable, which is our paper insulated lead covered steel wired armored cable. It has high voltage application and the advantage is that paper is a natural form of insulation. The disadvantage of a paper insulated lead covered steel wired armored cable, it's expensive, it's heavy and difficult to work with and to terminate. The requirements for a good conductor joint. The joint should not have a higher resistance than the conductor itself. It must be neat and placed in a suitable place. It must be mechanically strong and the strands must not be damaged. It should not be exposed to any damage and it must be easily accessible. For low voltage joints, we get the low voltage resin joint, tape joints and metal joint boxes, screw connectors and strip connectors. For high voltage joints, we get resin joints with taped conductors, hot shrink and cold shrink joints, pressure joints and metal joint boxes. Now, when making a low voltage resin joint, also known as a scotch cast type joint, we will first remove all our power source, choose the correct joining kit, like a scotch cast joint kit, measure the ends of the cable using the plastic box, Cut back the outer sheath and armoring, cut back the insulation, join conductors with ferrules, clip on the plastic box and fill it with resin. Some factors to consider when selecting a cable for a particular application. What is the maximum permissible volt drop? The type of load to be supplied, the type of protection available, the surrounding temperature, and the methods of installing the cables. Right, now we know get some calculations for this module. The first type of calculation is calculating the maximum permissible volt drop. Now, if we take a look at this formula, the voltage supply minus the volt drop is equal to the outlet voltage. It is important to note that the volt drop 
cannot be less than 5% of the supply. Right, in this example, determine the maximum permissible volt drop in volts allowed if the voltage at the point of supply is 240 volts. So to calculate the volt drop, we would say 5 over 100, which would give us 5% of 240 volts. Therefore, the volt drop cannot be greater than 12 volts. Now, to determine the uh, minimum permissible outlet voltage in volts allowed at a socket outlet in a house if the voltage at the point of supply is 240 volts. So to determine the minimum outlet voltage, it will be the supply voltage minus the volt drop, therefore 228 volts. Calculating the amount of fault current that a cable can carry. And looking at this formula, IFC is the fault current, A is the cross-sectional area in millimeters squared, CIF is the conductor insulation factor, and T is the time in seconds. Determine the maximum short circuit current that a PVC insulated cable, which has aluminum conductors with a cross-sectional area of 20 millimeters square, can carry for a maximum period of two seconds. So to calculate the size of the fault current, the conductor insulation factor is 62, the cross-sectional area is 20 millimeters square, and the time is square root two seconds. Therefore, the fault current that this cable can carry is 876,812 amps. Right, moving on to the final type of calculation for this module is dealing with single phase circuits. Now to calculate power, it's V times I times cos theta, and the units is kilowatts. A 220 volt single phase inductive load uses 20 kilowatts at a lagging power factor of 0.8. Calculate the full load current that flows through the supply cable. So to calculate the load current, it is uh, the power divided by the voltage and the power factor. The power is 20,000 watts, the voltage 220, and the power factor 0.8. Therefore, the load current is 113,64 amps. Now, when dealing with a three-phase circuit, we will multiply by square root three. The rest of the formula remains the same. A 380 volt three-phase load uses 20 kilowatts at a lagging power factor of 0.9. Calculate the full load current. Therefore, the full load current is the power divided by square root three, the voltage, the power factor. Therefore, we end up with a load current of 33,76 amps. This brings us to the end of the module. Thanks for watching and keep tuned for the next one. Thank you.